Booyah Hashel, welcome back to another episode of Can Hear Like Heat. It's your boy, G Squiz, and now I'm actually in Chamont, France. But due to some technical difficulties, we had to make we had to make do set up, which is why me and Joe are literally in two separate rooms right now. Uh, also in Chamont, France, the Joe Worsley, and all the way back home in Los Angeles, Hermosa Beach, California, Micah Maha. Boys, how are we doing? We're, we're, missing, we're missing Jakey. Yeah. Also, uh, for those who want to know who Jake is, this was kind of a make do because at this time of year, Micah is going to be back at home. So he has a lot to do. Joe has some stuff to tie up. Um, and I'm with him for now. So it's like, let's just do it now. Unfortunately, Jake has a barber to get his mullet and Letty looking nice and good for the summer. Um, scares us too many chicks to get ready for, man. Dude, I will say anytime I see pictures of Jake, it's always with like three or four chicks. Every <laughs> time. I know, we, yeah, we That's send to so know each other true, all the time. It's crazy. That's so true. But good for him. Good for him. Um, no, but today, so we are officially all three now done with our seasons. Um, the ups, the downs of playoffs. Um, some ups for some of us. The other two downs. Um, but first things first, congratulations, Micah. You won the Turkish League Animal earlier, the Turkish Cup. First as a member to win his league at a super sick man. Congrats, brother. Thanks, boys. Thank you. Wait, Gage, um, Bulgaria? Oh, no, you guys didn't win Bulgaria. No, we got third. Oh, no. We got third. And then third. also, Micah, you also got MVP of the match at the final match. And no, no. MVP Just like league. setter. Setter. I don't know if it's setter of the... Setter of the season or setter of the, I don't know. Okay. I don't know. Okay. Setter of the playoffs, but the playoffs aren't very long. I don't, I was a little confused. Okay. Well, last Maybe podcast. Like I okay. Well, either way, very, very sick. Um, like before we, before we move on to Joe, I are kind of a recap of my season. Um, I want to kind of, I want you to talk about what happened at the end, who you played at the end. Just kind of give okay. a breakdown of people and like how the whole season went and what you learned. Um, Oof. Cool moments. yeah I actually was like took a little bit of time on my flight home to like try and journal for like 30 minutes and like reflect on what like the season what I learned it was not flowing it was, it was like pretty it was pretty difficult to even like get words down which is a little strange but we played Fenerbahce in the final um, they're a big soccer club they've got their foreigners are Lubrich from Serbia, who's played in Russia for a while. Uh, and the other foreigner is Dick Koy from the Netherlands, but also with an Italian passport. He's played all over. And then also Penchev, they haven't, he played, he ended up being on the court at the end there, but they don't use him as much. And we played really well. Um, we beat them 3 0 in a best of five series. And they had beaten Zerat. Um, Knocks Zerat out. So, yeah, we played them. And then we also played them in the semifinal of the cup and played Arcus in the cup. I think we've also gone over that. And Zerat got knocked out by Arcus. But overall, good end of the year. It was definitely some rough moments throughout the year. Definitely my most difficult season, which is interesting. But definitely the hardest season I've been, I've been in overseas for sure. Um, and some things that I've learned, I think the biggest takeaway I had at the end was like, and this isn't really that great to say, but just kind of to just trust yourself and not really listen to anyone as a setter. Joe's always been better at doing that than me, um, which I think also helps him play with like a certain dis- decisiveness and like nobody questions what he does. And so just trying to get over that hump and become kind of the floor general was kind of the main the main thing I learned this season. Was there like an exact moment that you realized you're like, okay. Like, or can, there, there was. Example, is, there is was there, one day. It? Yeah, sure. But I don't even know what it was. It was literally one day and I was like, you know what? I'm going to do whatever the hell I want. Like, I'm not going to listen to anyone today. And I just played really well. And I ended up going to dinner with Namir and I told Namir, bro, I'm freaking just going to do whatever I want. Don't talk to me. And I just straight up to- told him, don't tell me what to do. And he's like, whoa, dude, I've been waiting for this, which was like a surprise to me. Like 
I thought he was going to say, dude, what are you talking about? And he's like, dude, I've been waiting for you to freaking take that step. That's a big step to take. And yeah, after that, I just didn't hold my, a lot of times I kind of hold my tongue and like, don't really, I'm kind of like taking a back seat, especially when you have guys like Ingepeth and Ymir. You kind of are just in the back, like, all right, just follow your lead, but kind of putting my foot down on some things, being a lot more vocal in a lot of, in a lot more situations and being more demanding of my teammates, I think, is the general lesson. Yeah. And then how is it, like, I mean, you're dealing with, like, millions of dollars on the floor with you and both hitters. And obviously, when, when that comes, that comes with, like, a lot of egos, um, for better or for worse. So how was it, like, like, was that, like, was that, like, insanely important in uh, developing that attitude? It probably it probably helped push me to a level where I was like, I'm just going to just do me. But to to be super fair and honest, my two all-stars, as all-stars, they are pretty, pretty chill. Like, I love playing with both of them on the court. And they're competitors, so, like, and they <laughs> – they're a little European and played in Italy for a while. We're like, you're going to get reactions out yeah. of people. But like, we're, I feel like all of us have been overseas long enough or we're starting to get used to that. And it doesn't throw us off like it did maybe your first year where you're like, whoa, like, cause we're, it's so new. Now it's just like, that's just what people do. And that's just how people are. They're just dramatic when right. you're up. But they, gotcha. they, no, they, they were great to play with pretty much all year. And, it was nice to play with them to be able to learn things and also to have to like step up with such big people on your team. It's like, if you can do it with them, then you can do it anywhere, I guess. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And then I'm going to go, we're going to go to Joe here. Uh, yeah. I'm interested. Start. I want to hear from Joe. And then we can wrap some stuff up. All right. Joe just ended literally a few days ago. Joe. Yeah. You can find the ending. And no Are we talking about yours? Did we already talk about yours? Sort of. I guess we did. Uh, yeah, well, I can recap it really quick. So it's better to end on Joe. What happened with me? I ended about two weeks. I've been on vacation for like three weeks, actually. We ended, we got absolutely demolished by Berlin in the semi. Well, they're not, when I say, I mean, we got, we had 3 0 in a five series. I mean, they were close. First two, pretty much, were the close matches. Um, but yeah, we just got, we just got, uh, what's it called? They were better than us. At the, the, the end of the day, they were playing better than us, too. Um, and yeah, we lost. And then, like I said, at a good international level, we got CV finals. Did decent, could have done better in Champions League, but you know, experience, experience, got some wins there. And then got the CV finals, insane experience, very proud of that. And then also, um, finished fourth in Bundesliga, very underwhelming, but that is how it is. Um, but yeah, that's how I finished. And now, Joe, and then that's why I'm here and able to come to Shamal right, to visit my brother. Not because the city's very nice. It is not not that nice of a city. The uh no, the yeah, as Gabe said, we just finished up two, three days ago. I think I've talked to like to minimal people about this. I haven't talked too much. I've been with Gage the whole time really since that. Um I told like, man, another it was like I I told a couple people like, another season, like another disappointing another disappointing season for me. To be honest, is one of the most disappointing, like disappointing years and how I felt in my, in my career, I would say of how everything turned out and the, uh, and I told, I was telling my dad this, I'm like, really like at the end of the day, you prepare eight months, eight and a half months really for what happens in one to two weeks at the end of the year. Um, and how you end that and how you end that, like it's, we, it was a complete meltdown by us. There's no other way for me to really put it besides that, like just completely, in a lot of fast, so many different facets, um, just were not ready, underprepared. There's there's a lot of elements that went into it, and just like didn't take advantage of opportunities that we were given, like time and time again, and just not ready to play when we needed to. Um, and that's just being me, really, really honest uh, with it. And is it's really, really disappointing because I've been on teams where it's close like here and there, or maybe you're not really favored to win and you don't win. It's like, okay. Like, yeah, we had our chances and we just didn't, but on a team where you've been so dominant all season and for me, clearly the best team have the best players. I mean, for crying out loud, like statistically, like performance wise, like everybody recognized different players on our team is 
the top players in their position across in the league. And with all that, with that, and just, you know, playing, we played our rivals um, who just have the experience. They, they signed on a player late in season that really, I think, changed their confidence. Like you could tell just how much he changed their, like their swagger and stuff on the court and something that I, it, it seemed like our team was scared a little bit of. Um, and that was frustrating to see from uh, at times. So that's just like being honest, like it, uh, us as a group, like really have to like take three, four months here to <laughs> get over it, get over it and get back. And like, there's things that we have to discuss heading into next year. Cause we have a lot of guys returning. Um, because Could I ask some of those things, like how Gage kind of said, what, what are those things that kind of stand out to you? Uh, in terms of sorry, referring to what? like bring up for next year, that you man. Wanna... What like what was it about? What was the difference in terms of like the mindset? Because it was it, it really was the whole playoff. Like against Paris, we played well, but it wasn't like we were playing at the same level. Like it was a whole playoff. Like there was just a different energy you could sense on the court with our team. And that was um, a quarterfinals, Joe. Does it explain really quick. Really, give yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry. The that was the quarterfinals. So the quarterfinals we played Paris, one three zero. Um, but I never felt like it was like our best volleyball. Um, and for me, I mean, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of things that like go into it of why I feel that way. I think some of it I keep within our team, Yeah. but, uh, but for me, like, I think you just watch it. just like, it was like a meltdown almost like with our team. Like how, how do we go and lose at home? Uh, with home court advantage and then go like just every like in tour we were playing better than them for I mean you, you just go through the statistics too it's like we're better than them in so many different areas it's like how do you lose these sets when you're out hitting them by you know 15 percent just we couldn't serve the ball in the court we we had 33 service errors the first match 33 service errors we gave them more than a whole set it's like that's just like mental mentally not being there, not like even recognizing when the ball's in play, we're better than this team. Like we were playing better than this team. And it's just like stuff like that, where we're just like, that's stuff you have to be able to adjust to and make adjustments in playoffs to be able to win those types of games and understanding like, if guy why like guys, a lot of guys, some of our guys lost confidence. Like there's all these things that went into it. It's like, why did this happen? I've like, we, we were, and I think where you look at it, it really comes down to like experience and how do we use this experience to make sure next year or something like this doesn't happen again where we dominate like all season and then end up just getting trounced in, by this team in, in the semifinal that we are still, I believe, are the better team. Um, but it was just, it's the little things in the playoffs that separate, you know, a win from a loss. So it, it's, it's like really hard to swallow. <laughs> I'll be honest. Like, we, I, uh, it's going to be really frustrating. I, it's hard after these, like, I just want to get out of here so fast. Like I'm, I'm mm -hmm. not a person who likes to hang around and see people and, oh, and, like, I just want to get out. That's not, that's not how I am. I don't know. It's just me. Like, like, it's kind of like more of a personal thing and it's nothing like against anybody. It's just like how I handle things a little bit, uh, like that, but we didn't deserve to win. That was another thing I told Gage directly after the match. I wasn't someone, I wasn't like really sad and so i'm like we didn't deserve to win I, like i i'm not gonna sit here and like you know be like really like down and all this i'm like i was more pissed off than anything and when that's the case i'm like dude we did not deserve to win we did not show up when we needed to show up we didn't i always say too it's like our your best players have to play better than their best player in the big games and our like and we didn't like for myself everybody like there's a, we didn't like show up when we had to show up and that's just like it is what it is. Uh, it's just hard to accept that, um, especially when we had such a big opportunity this year. And for me, I think Tor Watt like will clearly win the championship now, which is just like so crappy to see. Just knowing how much better we were than than them this year. Um, so I don't know. There's not too much I have to add on to that. Like from that, unless you have specific questions, but yeah, it's just like very disappointing season again, <laughs> more disappointing probably than past seasons because of how like we've just been the best team for months. Uh, even when we did lose, it's like, we just had like stupid 
like slip ups, was, but we were still like the better team than everybody else. I would feel like. My God. Oh, sorry. Can I just say that Tours? So Tours is the team that Joe played in the summer. It's traditionally mm-hmm. the best team in France at the highest budget. Yeah. And, and most, yeah, most titles and and Tours and Chamon are also big rivals. Um, mm-hmm. And also, Chamon has lost the last like seven or been in the, like either semis or in the finals. Like, yeah, the last yeah. Seven or so years and lost seven or eight years. Yeah. So. That's another thing. Is like, okay, why? Why is that the case? Like, something has to, you know. Common know, denominator. Questions have to get asked. I'm, I'm somebody like, man. At some point, what, what has to change? Like, something has to change. Like, I've only been here for one year though. But if it's the same thing every single season, like, what, what is it? Um, I, I'm not saying I have the answer for that. I'm just saying like, we gotta solve something here. How do we get right. over the hump? Mike, you were about to say something. Sorry. No, it just it it resonates with me because I felt like a similar way last year. It was the first time yeah. that I had personally just been on a team that um that had high expectations, a high high budget, and we dominated the league. I think we lost maybe one game. Maybe one game in the year. Yeah, we lost one match in the in this in the league. We wa- we lost four matches in Champions League total. Mm-hmm. So we lost like five matches all year. We won we won the cup. We didn't lose in in the semis, and then we went to the final and lost in five. And like the, the I I had never been so disappointed. At, in my career at all either. Um, I think overseas, there's just like so much sacrifice that goes into it as well. Mm -hmm. That like, and like you said, it's eight and a half months and you're not going to school. You're not doing much else and you're doing it for one reason and that's to win. And then Mm -hmm. you dominate all year long and you just don't know how many chances you're going to get to be on a team that can win. Like even in, for me, it's like I don't know how many chances I'll get anymore, even after this year. You know, like a lot of people don't get more than one, mm-hmm. and not even one. And so, like to lose opportunities like that, you just they're super painful to lose. Yeah. Um, and so, but I I I I can add that like this year I felt so much different in the final. Like, I definitely feel like we had as a team and a lot of us experience that, mm-hmm. like, we could, you can't, can't really muster that up without going through it. You know, like, yeah. there's no way to get there without going through it. And it's so valuable. Like you said, it comes down to experience a lot of times, especially in the playoffs. It's insane. And you see teams now, like in the NBA, that don't even care. What NFL. Like, yeah, and if it, like the Chiefs, they all year long weren't good, and then you get guys now like, or even Kawhi when he was winning when he was on load management, it's like LeBron's going into this to like as the seventh seed, and it's like he's dangerous because in the playoffs, like he has experience, and so yeah, I think you just you're seeing it now more than ever because of how intellectual the games like every sport has become yeah i feel like i don't know because i wasn't around back then but i feel like it's in the 80s 90s it was definitely intellectual but i felt like it was more of like a grinding athletic strong willpower like less statistics based obviously mm-hmm. than what we have now and like game plans and like i don't know i just feel like high IQ is being valued more than ever and experience is a big part of that. Yeah. No, yeah. There's, I mean, there's, like I said, there's a lot that I keep within like the team and myself that I'm like, not going to go into detail about, but that's kind of like feeling of it all. And like you said, it's like, how many chances do you get at that? Especially with like a season like this, where it's like everything like seemed to be falling into place. You have like, you know, had the right pieces. We had guys that have won championships here before. 
Like you felt like you had that kind of experience and then, yeah, it was just like, there was, there was definitely a difference though for me between playoffs and in regular season with our team. It is a big difference, man. It's crazy. The feeling, like the feeling, the confidence, everything was not the same. And I like, and, uh, and you recognize that kind of afterwards, but it's tough, tough to swallow. And it's just like, yeah, just disappointing, like disappointing season. Like I'll, I'll be yeah. really honest. It's not, you don't sit here and like you play for the playoffs at the end of the day, the entire season is to get into the playoffs. And then it's really to be able to win the championship. Besides that, like there's not a whole lot else to be super satisfied with at that point. I mean, can I, can I ask you guys a question? Setters. So obviously setters I've come around setters are the most important position. Um, but my question to you is setters are the, is setters are the most important. And obviously they touch the ball the most. Um, but when it comes to, like like you said, Joe, mentality um, and the rest of your hitters, maybe not having the right mentality or you not being a hitter, does that mean you have, would you, how much of an effect do you actually have when that's the case as being the most important players? Like, do you feel helpless almost? Like you could have the right mentality, no. but... I mean, no, definitely not helpless. I mean, you got to make like it's setter's job to to bring confidence and bring like the right energy into it. Um, the thing is, in playoffs, everything is like uh, what's the word? Blown like blown up a little bit. So the pressure, you feel the pressure way more. Like so, if it's new for a lot of these guys, like all of a sudden, like they're when they're when your back's against the wall, it's like how are you going to respond? When you know, like, you know, you lose this ball or here, or you lose this ball here, like your season's over. Like <laughs> when you when you when you start thinking about that, and I think when you approach it in the playoffs, you realize everything's so much more uh, glorified, I guess, like errors and mistakes, and like where it's like what you're. Lo- if you look at the sets, we lost so many sets by like two points here and there. It's like. Then you can and you can point out like small things here and there that made the difference of like why they won versus why you lost. Um, dude, that's what if you're listening to Mind the Game, that's what they were just talking about too. It's like JJ Redick and LeBron James, and they were just saying they're just talking about the playoffs, and LeBron and JJ were, I mean, saying exactly that. They just said small things like in the playoffs actually really matter, and typically that's when you win or lose games. Whereas in the regular season, like they don't make or break you and they don't stand out as much. Yeah. But guys are so much more dialed in and coaches. The, co- the coaching comes into play significantly in playoffs. It's the, the adjustments, the ability to make adjustments. And also not only the coaching, but the IQ of players in the playoffs, like you're talking about Micah and yeah. understanding that. And man, it's w- usually much harder to score in playoffs. The defense is like, Block uh the block systems are a lot more tuned in and dialed up, and they spend a lot more time. Because uh, if you're just playing one team over a full series, all they're doing is studying you uh, and your team, and so everything is a lot more detailed with that. It's like, okay, how do you make adjustments as as a team? And yeah, tours tours the best at that. I I I mean, their preparation, everything you can tell, they're the best at that in the league. Um, but they've also been there, done that. And they know what it takes to win a championship. And so uh, you can see why that's the case, though, man. They put, like, you can just see from their preparation how they, like, when you go watch film and stuff, like, they they got our guy. They got all the all the attackers, like, so dialed in. Um, and their defensive systems are so much more sophisticated than I think the rest of the league is always. And so it's, like, I think people can learn from that. I think that's the biggest thing is I think you have to – go and learn from that and take from that. I think the be- the most success the most successful teams always are so good at that. Like you you hear about the Patriots stuff. Man, they're pulling from every they look at other t- they look at the top college teams. Okay, how do we go and pull from that and like pull from that um them being successful with that or learning from somebody not being successful. Um and I think like all those little small things and being able to learn from that and is is so valuable and tour the team that we played in the semis for me is the best at that. Like they, they understand all that better than anybody else. 
I think like, to answer the question, I think at times I felt helpless. Um, because you are kind of the middleman in some ways where, I mean, you, you're, you could just be off outside of three meters uh, for an entire game and yeah. have hitters that are not at the time playing really well. And you're trying to find a solution, but there's like, it's our job. Our job is find solutions. And yet like you do, that's where I think learning this year, like Joe, like I've said before, something that I think Joe has always done a really good job of is being demanding of his, like his teams around him. And I, at times haven't been. And I think that that's where the setter can then gain control back is like, Demanding them if you are off the net to like take responsible swings or to recycle and like being on them. Wait, Micah, 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 Micah. You're really, you're really choppy, you're really choppy. What were you saying? I was just saying that I, I just heard, I don't know who said it, but like they were saying that the best coaches are like really, really good at demanding for, like things from their players. And yeah. like I did a quick reflection. I, I probably, I, it's not like that's all that matters in being a good coach, but a lot of the best coaches I've had were really good at demanding things from like from players and from everybody and themselves. Yeah. But maximizing potential. That's at the end of the day what the coach's yeah. job is to do. How do you get the most out of like what you have and what to deal with? Um, and that's when it comes down to it, that's really what the coach's job is to do. True. Uh, and so, yeah, no, I, uh, and the best, like, usually the championship teams, top teams, most consistent, successful teams, their coaches are so good at that. You look at the top coaches, like, no matter who you throw at them, they always figure out a way, like, to fit, to make this team good. Yeah. And you can be, like, set on, like, oh, this is what we got to do, but it's, like, sometimes that's not what works, and that's not what's best for that group or that team. Um, right and the best i think the top coaches are so good at understanding that and being able to adjust even even you know coaches who have specific like way about doing stuff sometimes they understand that they got to sacrifice a little bit to make to, for what's better for the group and that's what it is well uh not much else to say first off bummer and for joe shipping that well for me you know, it's what it is for Joe. Bummer end for Micah. Huge congrats, man. That's super, super sick. Don't want to end this podcast on a, on a super morbid tone. I know it's getting <laughs> late over here. It's It can be a little damper. The weather's not so hot either. It's so much <laughs> France. So in the town, I just want to get back to the U.S. now. Yeah. <laughs> and so now, so now the waiting game. Joe's going to just sit in the closet for 11 days and he's going to just wait for it and be reminded of his of his unfortunate ending. So that's how we handle things. I think it's a healthy way to handle things. Um, yeah. But guess what, boys and girls? The summer comes on. Well, first of all, are you guys allowed? To, I think I'm allowed. Are you guys allowed to say what you guys are doing next year or no? I'm staying here. I'm on two-year deal. Okay. You said, my, I don't know. They've been, on me, they've been on me about it, but I mean, I don't know why. Like, don't say anything? Yeah, like I had like two interviews, and this guy was like, My, "Michael, you can't say," and like all over me. I'm like, I don't understand. Okay, then don't say. Then don't say. Yeah, I don't know. So for those listening out there, for what like, is with that culture, dude? Dude, dude, I don't know. For me, for like we we sign like you can sign in December, January, and they will they they'll tell you do not tell anybody, <laughs> and they'll wait and they'll wait all the way till next year, like August. August or maybe even later. In September. November, they're going to announce it. The yeah, guy's been here for crazy. a month and a half. It's crazy. Can't tell anybody. It's crazy. Like where you're going, if you're leaving, if you're staying, you can't say jack squat. Well, Joe knows he said it to your Joe, especially back Shamar. Congrats, Joey. Um, I, you know what? They pretty much announced that I'll be turning to my third season at Lunaburg as well. Congrats, Gage. Um, and then Micah. 
we, the media will be all over his ass if we say anything. So we're not going to say anything for right now. Dude, yeah, um, it's pretty obvious. I think I've said it. I'm sure I've even said it on here before. So the slippage. That's okay. Uh, do, do we have any Turkish listeners? Do you know of any listeners in, in Turkey that listen or no? Like I, like I see the stats. Like, I think probably. I think probably. There are some, but it's not like a lot of people coming to you after the game saying I, I watched it or anything. Um, but if that's not the case, then don't worry, you're safe then. Uh, with that being said, we can talk really, really briefly before we wrap it up here about summer plans here. Um, the tour is upon us. Also, make sure you guys go and click the link in our bio or the description of this video. Join us on tour, whether you want to come to camp, clinic, or event. If you're listening to us within America or in Canada, chances are we're near you at some point during the summer doing something. Um, slot your phone up quick, really quick. Um, summer already where, full. Summer yeah. already filled up. Places where I'm being honest, I was like looking, I was like, all right, we'll see how this one does. Filling up quick. And I was like, that's awesome. We're just super super. Because <laughs> we used to be in the first floor begging for people to come to our stuff. Do we have yeah. a lot of really awesome coaches coming on board too. Yeah. If you guys go check out our Instagram, we have like a lot of good diversity and positions mm-hmm. and experience. A lot of people you guys probably don't recognize. So, uh, and Gage and I. Gage and I run the event. People don't understand that. Like we bring in coaches, but Gage and I run the event. So, and Gage uh, runs warm up. Gage always got the warm up. Dude, I'm, I, I'm and anything I'm against the kids. Anything against the kids. Gage's like, yeah, I got this job. I go to Joe. Yeah, I got this job. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. All right, Gage, go get him. Ah, oh, you know. <laughs> um, so we're literally so once we step foot on American soil in about eleven days, we're pretty much on the move until when we come back to Europe on uh, mid to early August. Like from there to there, there's no, there's, there's very little stoppage in between. Um, it's the biggest tour yet. We're super stoked. Um, Micah will be doing Team USA stuff. Do you want to briefly talk about that? Uh, I mean, I don't know how much there is to say, but yeah, we will start here in a little bit. Um, our training block, and then we'll go to VNL, and then uh, I think before VNL, they have to enter the Olympic roster. Wait, before, before the last stop of VNL, or like be- the entire. The- I don't know exactly when, when they need to enter it, but um, I, I believe that when VNL is done, it'll be, they'll know who the Olympic roster is. Those guys will probably train, go to a training camp in Europe, uh, I think in Italy. I'm not exactly sure where. And then go from there to um, mm-hmm. to France, to Paris for the Olympic Games. And so we'll see. Um, we can make that roster. Uh, the other shedders, I think, on on the list are Micah, Josh Tuaninga. Uh, who else is on the VNL roster list? Quinn Isaac, Andrew, Andrew, Andrew Rowan. Mm-hmm. All right, That's, but you know better than us. <laughs> yeah, I, I should. Know. Technically, I should. <laughs> but, on paper. <laughs> on paper. <laughs> I should definitely know a lot more than you guys. Uh, In reality, who knows? But yeah, so it's a big, big summer for Team USA. Big summer um, for my me. I hope. Well, we'll see. And anyway, it'll be. It's always a big summer. And then, in the meantime, if there's any stops that I can make it to, depending on what happens in the USA gym, uh, I'll be jumping in on some of those. And on seven, super day, super pumpy, man. It's a big summer. Uh, in a lot of different ways. So we'll be cheering you on, brother. Brother, and for our listeners out there, we won't distract Thanks, Micah brother. too much. <laughs> we won't distract Micah too much from his con from his stuff, but then we can get a video or two. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some stuff. <laughs> um, and then also, I think that's it. But with that being said, guys. We'll get some merch. Yeah, about some international shipping thing. now too is all live. And we're, yeah, we have uh, some sick new merch. International shipping is live. Joe, we kind of we breezed over that really quick, but it is live. I know for the we have a lot of international listeners. Go on our website, Aston.net, or the link in the description. You can get your merch there. Support the boys. Support the tour. Um, and all the also, merch is super sick too. It's like you can wear it all the time, and it's good quality. So it matters, man. And then um, and again, if you want to sign up for every anything, 
Cam Clinic or any of our Ali Batenhorst for our Nebraska listeners. We just announced, and SC is coming to LA, so that's another one. We just announced that today. I just saw. So, and many, many cool more. to get her there. Alrighty. Um, just remember, guys, can't handle the goddamn kitchen. It's been another episode of Gen Y. Out of system.